Hello, my name is Crystal Rose Fricker and I'm the president of Pure Seed and Pure Seed Testing, a research company and a production marketing company that deals in grass seed. Hi, I'm John Holmes, president of Atlas Turf International, and we specialize in exporting uh, turf grass, both warm season and cool season, all over the world. Hi, I'm Michaela Fricker, and I'm the director of communications at Pure Seed, and I help market grass seed all over the world. My name is Austin Fricker, and I'm a plant breeder at Pure Seed Testing, and I also help work on seed production and uh, working with farmers to produce seed at Pure Seed. So I think what makes grass um, ideal for football is having a grass that is persistent, can handle the tearing of traffic of the athlete's cleats and spikes, but also can handle lower light intensities because some of the stadiums create shade on the football pitch. Uh, and so grasses that are resilient, that can recover quickly and have good density and traction for the athletes. Athletes uh, in today's world, especially professional athletes, uh, they're paid a lot of money and, and when they're injured, um, it, it can take them out of play. So having a turf grass uh, that they can play on and, and feel comfortable uh, moving and sliding without being injured is, is so important. And in today's world of turf grass breeding, a lot of those goals are being achieved. So depending on the location of where the pitch is and uh, geographically really drives what species can be uh, used there. And in northern climates, you see a lot of uh, fescue used. Uh, also, you see blends of, of ryegrass and bluegrass. And in the warmer climates, you see paspalum and Bermuda grass used in certain areas like Qatar, where the World Cup matches are being played, you have uh, paspalum as the base grass overseeded with, uh, with ryegrass. So you have a combination of both warm and cool season grasses being used on the same field. Um, water quality uh, also drives uh, which type, which species is, is used on pitches, as well as the general stadium. To develop varieties for sports, it takes a fully integrated company or plan. So for us, it starts with our breeding and research. So we spend at least 10 years developing a perennial ryegrass or even a warm season species to be used on a sports field. And we're looking for a lot of traits that I mentioned earlier, like sustainability, traffic tolerance, and in some cases, even germination, that the seed can germinate in cooler temperatures and establish quickly so that the sports turf manager has a tool that he can really intercede into that turf surface and get a good surface quickly. Then we have to get the seed produced. And so we work with growers. And so part of developing a good sports turf variety is also developing a variety that a grower can produce economically and make a living on. Um, so then once we get the production situation figured out, we start to look at logistics and getting seed shipped, which is which is also just an insane process depending on where you're going, getting final sanitary permits and, and just the logistics of sending sheet of seed over the water or sometimes even having to ship it um, through airplanes just to get it there in time and in a timely manner in a safe way. Yes, and then when the seed is ready to go and be shipped out, um, the sports turf managers um, like to trial the seed um, before they put an order in and so it's important to be able to um, send these samples out to be tried and, and tested for um, traffic tolerance and drought tolerance um, and then once the manager is, feels confident in the variety they order and then, um, then, it, then it gets to be tested by the players. Well, now that Team USA is out of the matches, unfortunately, um, Morocco has become a, uh, a great storyline 
there um, with the first African country being in the finals. I was of course rooting for the U.S. Then I was rooting for the Netherlands because we do a lot of work with the breeder in Holland and I know that they're they were rooting for the Netherlands and now yes I am also rooting for Morocco. I am also rooting for Morocco. So in the World Cup uh, I'm rooting for Argentina. I'm, I like the, the whole history of Lionel Messi and it potentially being his last World Cup rooting for him to pull it out and get the cup. So.